Hello and welcome to Women's Football Talk. Today we're going to be looking at the transfers that have happened across the WSL in all the teams and how they have done so far. We'll give them a quick rating out of 10. So we'll start off with Jonas Adevel and Arsenal who have made three signings so far this summer. They've brought in Mariana Caldente on a free transfer after her contract with Barcelona expired. They've brought in Daphne van Domsler from Aston Villa and recently they've signed Rosa Kafferji from BK Hacken. Three good signings, they have helped their team obviously come a lot better uh, than what they previously had. Uh, they've had a couple of departures in two goalkeepers in Sabrina D'Angelo and Kaylin Marchese have both left. Uh, Viviana Miedema has also left the club to head to Manchester City and Gio Kiroj has also left the club this summer. So it's been a bit of a busy summer for Jonas side of our side. They've done okay. Um, I still think they need a couple of players here and there uh, to add to their squad depth overall. But uh, I think Arsenal will be happy with the business that they have done so far. So out of 10, I will give them a strong 8 out of 10 so far. Next up in the WSL is obviously Aston Villa. Under new management this summer, uh, Robert De Powell coming in from Bayer, Bayer Leverkusen. They've been very busy in terms of players coming in. They've signed Sabrina D'Angelo, who was at Arsenal, but she left on a free transfer. They've brought in Miri Taylor after her contract expired. They've brought in Katie Robinson from Brighton and Ohio Albion. And then two big signings that they've signed, Missy Bo Kearns from uh, Liverpool and Chastity Grant from Ajax recently. Again, not then all the signings have made a couple more. Uh, but overall, I think Aston Villa, very strong transfer window. They needed it in terms of players uh, to improve their squad after last season. Obviously, big departure in losing Daphne van Domsler. They've also lost Alicia Lehman, uh, who's gone over to Juventus. So uh, overall, I do think Aston Villa will be very proud of uh, the business that they have done. And I think overall, I would give them a 7.5 out of 10 so far. Very good business, but still expect them to do some more uh, as well with just over a month left until the WSL season starts. Next up is Brighton and Hove Albion. Again, another side under new management this year in Dario Vravic. Another side that have been busy. They needed to be busy because the amount of players that have left their club are on free transfers due to their contracts expiring. But the players that brought in Fran Kirby on a free transfer after her contract with Chelsea expired. Marissa Olislagas and Marit Aoi from FC Twente, Rachel McLaughlin from uh, Rangers, and then they've brought in a couple of other uh, players as well. Strong business. Um, again, I still think they need one or two forward players to replace the likes of Elizabeth Turland and uh, Katie Robertson, who have left their club. But so far, Brighton and Hove Albion get a very strong 6.5 out of 10. Still improvements needed in this team, but definitely a step in the right direction. Next up it is Chelsea, the reigning WSL champions, obviously coming into this season under new management uh, under Sonia Bonpasta. A lot has uh, changed in terms of players leaving and joining the club. Big transfer obviously was Lucy Bronze coming in from Barcelona after her contract ended. They've also brought in uh, Sandy Baltimore and Oriane Jean Francois from uh, PSG. Again, strong bit of business. I don't think Chelsea really needed that much to improve. So for them, I'm going to give them a strong 8 out of 10 in terms of the business that they have done so far. Next up is the newly promoted side, Crystal Palace. Now, they obviously haven't been in the WSL before. Uh, this is their first time being there. Now, it took them a while to get some business over the line and get any bit of transfers in. But they have now added players. You look at uh, Katrina Vaya who came in after leaving Everton. They've brought in Shea Yanez from Bristol City and they've also uh, recently brought in India Page Riley and Ashley Weirden from Ajax. So I like the business that they've, they've done. They've not gone out and gone absolutely crazy and gone need X player Y and tried to sign 101 players and it not work and backfire to them. They've signed very smart players in terms of what they will need and addressing uh, the needs and getting that uh, WSL experience in someone so uh, versatile in defence as Katarina Vaya. Yes, she's had her injuries, but I do think this is a really good signing from Crystal Palace and will definitely help them throughout this season and going forth in the WSL. For them, I think it is a strong 7 out of 10. I would like them to sign maybe one or two more players, but it is a big 
uh, obviously ask for them a team in their first season in the WSL. Next up, Everton, Brian Sorensen side. Again, another team that was quite quiet to start uh, the summer window off, but have now got a move on and signed some players. They bought in Viatic Crisari and Melissa Lawley. Two good bits of uh, business. They've also brought in Tony Payne and Inma Gabaro from Sevilla. Again, both of them, I think, are really good signings, especially Gabaro. Playing in that attack role just at 21 years of age, I think is a very good signing for them. They've obviously had a few players leave, most notably uh, Hannah Benison leaving to head over to Italy and join uh, Juventus. But overall, Brian Sorensen side can be very happy with the business they've done so far. I still think a bit more players, one or two, to help with the consistency. But well, overall, I would give Everton a strong 6.5, bordering on 7. Next, Leicester City. Again, another side under new management. Andreen uh, Mikel came in quite late in terms of the managers, com managers coming in, but uh, they brought in Asmita Ali, who was at the club uh, last season on loan. They brought Ruby Mace back to the club. Uh, she's also spent time at the club previously on loan, and they've also signed Chantel Swarby, Sari Keys, just to name a couple. I like the business Leicester have done. In terms of being able to be uh, best of the lower half teams, they can definitely do that. I still think, again, like Crystal Palace, they're going to need a couple more players to help get them over the line. And I think a strong uh, seven for Leicester City so far this window. Next up we have is Liverpool. Now, Mount Beard side were obviously absolutely fantastic last season, finishing in fourth place ahead of Manchester United, a team that I haven't done uh, much business in terms of incomes. They've brought in Olivia Smith for um, Sporting Club de Portugal, very highly. Uh, looked at 19 year old player uh, from Canada meant to be uh, such a great player and one that uh, will wow many fans this season however in terms of outgoings they've lost quite a few I mentioned Missy Bocones and Miri Taylor and Melissa Lawley but they've also lost Shanice van der Sand and Natasha Flint and McCoy Visto so they've lost more players than they've signed but I think for Liverpool, if they want to be a consistent top four side, they need to be looking at bringing in more players. There's been strong rumours um, from Emma Sanders of the BBC that Gemma Evans is set to join them from Manchester United. As a time recording, she hasn't done yet. But again, that's another bit of smart business from uh, Liverpool if they do bring her in and when that gets done. Uh, but so far, can't really give them too higher than a six, but I do like the business of Olivia Smith coming into the team. So it's a six out of 10 for me for Liverpool. Next up, we have Manchester City. Now the big signing for Gareth Taylor's side this season was obviously bringing in Fifiana Miedema on a free transfer after her contract with Arsenal ended. They've also added in a couple of Japanese players in Risa Shimizu, who joins after leaving West Ham United. They've also brought in uh, goalkeeper Ayaka Yamashita and Aoba Fujina in the forward place as well. So, um, smart bit of business from Manchester City. They needed a goalkeeper in. Obviously, Ellie Roebuck has left to join Barcelona and Sandy McGeever is recovering from her injury. So, bringing in uh, Yamashita as well as Eve and its uh, young goalkeeper will definitely help Kiara Keaton and give her that much needed competition. Um, again, smart business. I'm really excited to see how Miedemar fits in alongside uh, the likes of Chloe Kelly and Bonnie Shaw and then obviously Jill Rod when she's back to full fitness. Um, so overall, I would give Manchester City a strong 8 out of 10. I like the business they've done. Still got plenty of the window to go, but they've done very smart so far. Next up is Manchester United. Mark Skinner side will obviously be looking to jump back into a top four spot after such a poor season. Obviously, they won the FA Cup, but uh, elsewhere, they will want to improve on the league form. A lot of Big players have left the club, Lucia Garcia, Katie Zeller, Maria, three big, big players at Manchester United to leave the club, but they have signed well so far. They've brought in Dominic Janssen from Wolfsburg, Elizabeth Turland on a free transfer. They've also brought in Canadian Shimi Wujo, um, Anna Sandberg and Melvin Millard's loan has now been made permanent. I like the signings that Man United have made. Maybe a couple more here and there just to get them really looking like a top three side in the WSL. I'd like uh, maybe a keeper for them that can offer more competition to um, Fallon Tullis Joyce. Obviously, they've got Safia Middleton Patel at the club, but I think someone else can give them uh, competition and maybe one or two more players. But a strong um, 
close to an eight for Manchester United so far uh, in terms of their business. Next up we have is Tottenham Hotspur penultimately in this WL season. Robert Villaham done really well in terms of how Spurs did last season. So far they've only made two signings. Amanda Neil then her loan has now become permanent from Juventus and the signed Ella Morris from Southampton. Really highly rated uh, 21 year old English uh, defender. So They've bolstered up their defence, haven't really lost too many players that you think, okay, these are going to be big losses. Um, Shalina Zadorski, Ramona Petzberger, Rhea Percival, Nikola Kosachewska, Asmita Ole, as I mentioned. So not really too many players that they've lost from last season. Obviously, the big one was uh, Grace Clinton after her loan ended. There was talks that she could potentially go back to Tottenham, uh, but Manchester United don't seem to be in the mood for any talks in terms of uh, letting that loan be extended or her leaving permanently and um, so I think that is a hole that Spurs need to fill and um, so for them I'll give them 6.5 going on to a 7 and then finally West Ham United again a team that will be hoping for a much better season in the WSL this time around uh, the business they've done they've signed quite a few players they've signed uh, Kingus Simic uh, a goalkeeper they've also brought in Shakira Martinez, who's gone out on loan uh, for this season, but they've also signed Camilla Saez, Inez Baluma. So, good bit of business so far from West Ham. Going to be interested to see how they do. They've lost um, players like Mackenzie Arnold, Howard Sazoka has left the club, Emma Schnurler, Hanukkah Hayashi, and Risa Shimizu, just to name a few of the players. Um, but they are big, big uh, losses, especially uh, Mackenzie Arnold. So, really interested to see how West Ham go there. But again, not really in terms of a new player, but it will feel like a new player coming back to the squad is uh, Dagny Brenyers Dottier, who signed a new contract earlier on this summer after her maternity leave uh, last season. She was a big, big loss for Rianne Skinner side. So see how she does in this West Ham team this season is going to be uh, really interesting. So for them, I will give them a 7 out of 10. So that is how I am rating each WSL team's transfer business so far. Obviously, uh, recording this on the 14th of August, so a lot can change over the next month or so before the transfer window closes. Let me know your thoughts of your team's transfer business so far this summer in the comment section below. Make sure you're following us on Twitter and Instagram, WF Talks on Twitter and Wings Football Talk, all one word over on Instagram to keep up to date with all the latest news and deals from around the world of women's football. Make sure you're subscribed to this channel with post notification bell turned on so you never miss a video of ours and that you're following us on uh, Substack womensfootballport.substack.com for all the latest articles and stuff there and we also have a dedicated transfer blog to keep up to date with all the transfers not just in the WSL but around the world of women's football as well. In the meantime we will see you soon.